ચક્ષુરુ ઉન્મિલિતમ્યસ્મૈ શ્રી ગુરુવે નમ શ્રી ચૈતન્ય મનોભીષ્ટમ સ્થાપિતમ્યન ભૂતલે સ્વયં રૂપમ કદામાયંતિ સ્વાપદાંતિક વંદેહમ શ્રી ગુરુ શ્રી યુત પારકમલમ શ્રી ગુરુ વૈષ્ણવમ શ્રી રૂપમ સાગજતમ સહાગના રઘુનાવિતમ તમ સજીવમ સાધ્વૈતમ સાવધૂતમ પરિજનમ સૈઠમ કૃષ્ણ ચૈતન્ય દેવ શ્રી રાધા કૃષ્ણ પદમ સહાગના લલિત શ્રીવિત કંપિત હે કૃષ્ણ કરુણા સિંધુ દીનબંધુ ગણપતે ગોપેશ ગોપિકા કંઠારકંઠ નમસ્તુતે છપ છપ કંચન ગૌરંગે રાધે વૃંદાવનેશરે વૃષભાનુ સુતુ દેવી પ્રાણમારી હરે પે વંચાકલ્પાતૃપ્યા કૃપા સિંધુ બહે વરિતા પાવનેભ્યો વૈષ્ણવિભ્યો નમો નમ જય શ્રી કૃષ્ણ ચૈતન્ય પ્રભુ નિત્યાનંદ શ્રી અદ્વૈત ગદર શ્રીવાસદે ગૌરભક્તવૃંદ હરે કૃષ્ણ હરે કૃષ્ણ 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 હરે 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 રમ હરે રમ 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 હરે હરે તમામ વિષ્ણુ પદાય ઓ નમ ઓમ વિષ્ણુ પદાય કૃષ્ણ પૃષ્ઠાય ભૂતલે શ્રીમતે ભક્તિ વિદાંત સ્વામી નામિને નમસ્તે સરસ્વતી દેવી ગૌરવની પ્રચારીને નિર્વિશેષ શૂન્યવાદી પ્રચાત દેશિને it should be here so okay yes. okay bro you chanted amazing uh, so that's really nice in two weeks right. two half weeks you have learned the whole thing this amazing prabhu thank you thank you, thank you prabhu very nice prabhu very nice <laughs> thank you thank you prabhu uh, removed so uh, so that people don't take advantage of the mantra because like uh, it's for people uh, who want to be initiated right oh yes thank you prabhu ગુરુવે then the krishna pranam mantra it's like that most like okay. that it's like that only okay okay prabhu yes, sometimes they start with om namo bhagavate vasudevaya three times that oh, is called okay. bhagavatam oh yes yes i've i've seen it chapter 1 also that one, one other other verse i forgot there two two or three verse yes yes, yes prabhu before bhagavatam they reside they reside the manu prabhu do you know this of course you know because you live in temple the oh, is it svinvatam svakata krishna is it this one that is uh, another one is like you have to uh, serve the book bhagavatam and the person bhagavatam like that one 
So you're talking about the incantation yeah. from uh, one one two seventeen and one two and one two uh, eight, I believe, or one two four. Narayana Namaskritya. Yeah, 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 that one. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chai. Oh, yeah. Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punyasravana Kirtana Vidyandasto Yabadrani Vidunuti Suritsatam Nasta Prayas Fabdresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki These are usually when before Bhagavatam class these are recited. For before reading also sometimes one can recite. <laughs> but yes, Lebohang Prabhu, you chanted really nicely that Bangla chant. Oh, thank you, Prabhu. Yes, very, very nice. Because Prabhu joined first first time. He was he was speaking the Sanskrit like uh like a little bit like newcomer, but the only two weeks now he's like yes, mastered it. <laughs> I don't know what he was he was yes, he doing these two weeks, but yeah, okay. Did he watch the the it playlist by Tabar Prabhu? He's watching the Strengthening Foundation. Yeah, so he's probably watching the Sanskrit course, right? Not yet. I linked it, but not yet. Not yet. I've done it yesterday only. Ah, okay. Yeah, I linked it yesterday, so he's starting. I am going to start that also. Yes, it's a really nice one. Okay, now we're gonna read about Hux Huxley. I think it was yeah, Huxley. <clears throat> I missed a that. What is what was his name? Oh, Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. Yes, no, yesterday we read the Darwin. Yeah, I didn't read it. Yeah, he was arguing that the bodies will change, and Prabhupada said that no, the bodies are always there. And how did he argue? Yes, Prabhupada said that if the bodies change, then sh there should not be monkeys. Who knows other things that were there? Yeah, he said that the species are changing. That was like the main point. Yes, yes. And can I also start reading? Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> but one second, I'm I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah. Then he was talking about the bones. Yeah. He said there is no evidence that human civilization existed on this earth millions of years ago. He he says like this. But Prabhupada said we have Vedic authority. But then he said, but bones. Then Prabhupada said, but that is bone authority. Then he Prabhupada argued with him. Will you listen to Bones or will you listen to the sages and Ramayana and all these? Because in a Vedic tradition, the bodies are burned. So how will you find the bones? Yes, Prabhu. Oh, then he no, was... No, no, but, but, but he's saying, uh, would you follow Bones or would you follow Vedas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Prabhu. laughs> Yeah, Darwin was a Christian first. And then he went 1830, 1836 on some island and he was doing some studying and suddenly he came out with the evolution thing. Oh yes, Prabhupada argued with him. He said there is no dinosaurs. Where is the dinosaur like... Prabhupada was saying why the dinosaurs no, Shyama Sundar was saying, or Darwin was saying, why the dinosaurs are gone? That he was saying that this is evidence that there was other species and now they're gone, they went to extinct. Prabhupada argued no species can go extinct. And he said, but what about the dinosaurs? Then Prabhupada said, you have not seen all the planets. He, then he said, you have not seen under the ocean what are there. You have not studied, excavated all places. So how can Darwin say? And then Prabhupada's yeah. point was that his his evidence is limited, so he cannot give a conclusion. That was like the main point. 
<clears throat> yes, so this Prabhupada point, you know, all these like uh, scientists, they are figuring out, you know, there are some sightings of like uh, dinosaurs in the water. I used to watch the show when I was a kid. So they like big, big, like only the uh, head would be out and they would have a photo and they try to find them, but they are impossible to find. Yes, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave the apartment analogy. He said that as the living and human being, he changes apartments. He has a desire to change apartment. So then he moves somewhere and changes the apartment. But according to the desire, the apartment itself, it doesn't change. The apartment stays as, as it is. If the person wants a huge apartment, then he has to go to a different apartment. But it's not that the apartment changes, but the so human being moves to the ad other apartment. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I read that. I was, I, I think I was in the class when that was being read. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, we continue from here. So, Lebohang Prabhu, you can continue if you want. You can read like three pages and then let's change so everyone can read a little bit. Okay, okay, Prabhu. Where can I start? Uh, one yes, who engages, right? Oh, okay. Where, like, where Halaxi, is it Halaxi there? Should I start there? Yeah, the, here, from this point. Is it, is it Hux? Yeah, it's Hux oh, what? with A. Right. Okay. Hux. Huxley saw the Indian philosopher as buckling under a strong, a stronger cosmos. He writes, by the gang, the, by the gangs, by the gangs, gangs, ethical okay. men. At you can say, when it's, it's, when it's like this, you can say Ganga, because this Ganges is some British nonsense, you know, they did some word like this. So it's Ganga. Oh, Ganga. Yeah. Okay. Ethical man admits that the cosmos is too strong for him. Srila Prabhupada, yes. And destroying every bond, every bond which ties him to it by aesthetic discipline he seeks salvation in absolute renunciation that is correct however Haxal, Haxali saw the saw this attempt as flight from the battlefield exhorting an English Englishman to cosmic battle battle he writes we are grown men and must take the men strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield and at, at last to at, at last to die he may not yield but nature will kick him and say you must die in any case mr Huxley, Huxley is no longer surviving whether we we be englishmen frenchmen americans or whatever or whatever we cannot survive but have to succumb to this dictate dictations of material nature according to bhagavad gita prakte kriya manani gura gunai karmai karmani sarvasa ahankara vi vidumata vidu atma kara karaham is it kartaham iti manyate the bewildered sp the spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature bhagavad gita chapter 3 text 27 it is false ego that says i i death is unavoidable for everyone therefore the intelligent man first of all considers how he can transcend death it is explained in bhagavad gita that if we understand krishna we can we can survive it is not that Huxley believed in any kind of material immortality in evolution and ethics. He writes of transmigration and karma. Every senti and every sentient being is reaping as it has sown. If if not in this life, then in one or other of the infinite series of ante antecedent, antecedent existence of which is which it is the latest term, also of Indian philosophy. The substance of the cosmos was Brahman, that of individual men, Atman, and the latter was the latter was separated from the former from the former only, if I may so speak, by its phenomenal 
envelope by the casing of sensations, thoughts and desires, pleasures, pleasures and pain, pains, which may make up the il elusive fat Fatima Fatima Gorina Fatima Gorina something like that Fatima Gorina of life. <laughs> is it Fatima? How do you pronounce that name? Oh, this is Fatima Gorina. Fatima Gorina. You were saying it right the first time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Brahman is not separated from Atma. Rather, they are eternally coexisting. That is explained in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, wherein Sri Krishna discusses the body Kshetra, which is the field of action and the Atma, the individual soul who is the owner of the field and who works in it. It is also pointed out that there is another owner, Upadrastanumandacha. Okay, you can go down. Oh, Bharata Bhokta Mahesh Vasa Parama Parameti Kapi Chapi Ukto Dehes Mini Puru Purusa Para Para. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13. Text 23. The Atma, the individual soul, knows only his own body, but the super soul knows everything about everybody. I may know the pains and pleasures of my body, but I am ignorant of the pains and the pleasures of another. The supreme soul, Param Atma, knows everything about all bodies in the universe. There is no questions of separation. Rather, the two are eternally coexisting. Huxley, Huxley's understanding in similar in similar to that of the sun, is it sans sun Sanskrit or what? Sun Sankar. Sankara. Sun what? Sankara. Sankara. No, no. Sankara. It's Sankara and then the right. They both are joined. Sankara. Oh, Sankara. The yeah. Atma is imprisoned within the body, and when he attains enlightenment, the bubble of illusion will burst. And the freed individual Atman will lose itself in the universal Brahman. This does not mean that the Atma becomes Param Atma. A drop of water may merge into the sea, but it does not become the sea. The sea remains the same whether a drop of water merges with it or not. When a green bird enters a green tree, you may not be able to see the bird anymore, but it is foolish to think that the bird has become one with the tree. The individual Atma retains his individuality although our defensive vision may not be able to perceive it the sankara sankara it mistakenly thinks that the individual soul measures with the you can go down prabhu yes prabhu see in this short answer Prabhupada destroyed the whole sankara philosophy <laughs> yeah. it's a very nice example of that word with one one tree and bird, he destroyed the whole philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> green bird, <laughs> the green tree. The Sankara would say that the tree bird becomes the tree, <laughs> but that is foolish, Prabhupada said. Okay, wait, okay. Can I start there? The Sankara, it's okay. Yes. He retains his individuality. Halaxi writes there. There was no eternal power which could affect, could which could affect the sequence of cause and effect, which gives rise to karma. None but the will of the subject of the karma which could put an end to it. As long as the individual soul acts according to bodily de designations, he is not free. When when he gives up these designations and agrees to become Krishna Das, the servant of Krishna, he saves himself. But is there any question of liberation independent of Krishna? No, it is explained in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 3, text 9, that we should work only for Krishna, otherwise we become entangled, entangled free. And you can go down. Freedom means, means acting on behalf of the Supreme. By acting in this way, we are not bound by karma. 
When a soldier follows his order and kills on the battlefield, he receives medals, but as soon as he kills one man on his own behalf, he is considered a murderer and is and is subject to be hanged. This is karma bandana, bondage to karma. To act may to act may be the same. Evolutionary. Oh. But in one instance, the soldier is acting under the orders of the state, and in the other, he is acting for his own sense gratification. Similarly, when you act for Krishna, you act in freedom. And when you act for yourself, you are bound by karma. That is the main teaching throughout Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was thinking of leaving the battlefield due to personal considerations. But when he understood that it was his duty to fight on Krishna's behalf, he, he agreed. We have... Yes, Prabhu, this example of soldier and battlefield, and this is nice, the order to the soldier. This is really nice example. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Like, uh, I have uh, like, uh, like Kshatriyas, uh, they have, like, uh, they are also soldiers, but, yeah. uh, like, uh, like, a uh, type of a soldier, no, Prabhu, uh, but uh, they are also killing uh, in war and all things, but uh, they have no karma, no Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. You mean like uh, if they uh, are fighting dharma, you then uh, mm -hmm. because in the previous age, like wars were uh, used to happen on Vedic principles, not like now. Yes, Prabhu. Before. Yeah, there was many rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, Prabhu. But see, in Bhagavad mm -hmm. Gita. Arjuna broke the rules of fighting. He was he shot who he shot to the back. I forgot. Karna, Karna. He said Karna. shot Karna to the back, but he it, that was not sinful because it was ordered by Krishna. Mm. <laughs> so many times that happened. Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> Krishna was telling you this in Maharaj to lie. <laughs> yes, yes, some may argue that this was not fair. How could Krishna do like that? <laughs> but in one instance true. but in one instance the soldier is acting okay where are we oh we're not there okay after this page yeah. let's change so others can also sorry after this page let's change so other some other okay. cannot yes probably in, evol in evolution and ethics Huxley tries to relate karma to evolution. In the theory of evolution, the tendency of a germ to develop according to a certain specific type it is, is its karma. The snowdrop is a snowdrop and not an oak. And just that kind of snowdrop, because it is the out, outcome of the karma of an endless series of past existences. That is correct. The process is called karma bandana. One takes on one body after another until he reaches the human form. He is, he is then capable of deciding whether he should continue or put an end to this process of karma bandana by surrendering to Krishna. If he surrenders to Krishna, the process stops. And if he stop, and if he does not, the process continues according to the law of nature. As soon as Huxley became a Darwinist, he rejected a... Yes, you can... He rejected... Okay, we rejected a supernatural God and the Bible proclaiming that arguments from the design had received its de death below. Unlike Spinoza, is it Spinoza? He did not accept a panentheistic God, but believed in the divine government of the un universe and felt that the, cosm the cosmic process is rational and not, and not accidental. Still, he rejected a personal God concerned with morality. That is a mistake. Nature in itself is not rational. It is simple. It is simply dead matter. A piece of wood is not rational, but the carpenter who shapes it, the cosmic process may be rational, but this is only because there is a rational being behind it. That rational being is the supreme personality, supreme personality of Godhead. Nature cannot be rational out of its out of its own accord accord any may any more than a piece of wood can become a table without a carpenter. Huxley felt that man must remain an agnostic because he cannot know God, even though God may exist. Why can men not know him? Because he does not appear in phenomenal form. 
Yes, you can go down, Prabhu. But what? But what? Okay, but what if he appears? You you say that you cannot see him in a phenomenal form, but God can appear and teach you. Then you can know him. We don't try to attain knowledge of God by speculating, nor do we try to get knowledge of God from fools or skills. And you said I must stop here, Neprabhu. Philosophers. Can read this last part. This until Swamasundar. Okay. Okay, we take knowledge directly from God himself. God appears and gives us the instructions of Bhagavad Gita and we take our knowledge from this. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Jyani Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shla Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Jyani Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shla Prabhupada. Welcome to meeting session, Prabhu. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Who wants to continue? I can continue. Yes, bro. Shyam Sundar Das. In any case, Huxley agreed that we can never realize God by empiric method. That is Shira Prabhupada. That is nice. We agree that God cannot be known by our present senses. However, we do not agree that God cannot be known at all. The present senses can be purified by Krishna consciousness. And with purified senses, we can come to know God. Shyam Sundar Das. Huxley also introduced the conception called epiphenomenalism. The belief that the mind and consciousness are products of physical process. Shiva Bhagavad. We also accept the fact that mind is physical and that consciousness is also physical yet subtle. Shyam Sundar Das. For Huxley, when the body dies, the mind and consciousness also dies. Shiva Bhagavad but he has no information of the soul. Whenever there is a soul, there is a mind, consciousness, and everything else. The mind, consciousness, and intelligence are all present, but now they are materially contaminated. What we have to do is to purify them. It is not that we are trying to make our mind, consciousness, and intelligence name. That is not possible. Yes, Prabhu. And I think I think this Huxley is really confusing because, you know, just previously he was talking about reincarnation and some something like this and now he says that mind and consciousness dies See, the, the so oh yeah he was talking about the continuous existence of the soul and here <laughs> yes bro sham <laughs> sundar das but when the body dies does the individual consciousness also die with it shiva bhagavad no how can you die your consciousness simply carries to you to another body next uh, one henry bodson 1859 to 1941 Bhagavan maintained that God's reality can be intuited only by mystical experience. The creative effort is of God if it is not God himself. The knowledge of God leads to activity, not passivity. Shiva Prabhupada. Yes, knowledge of God certainly leads to activity. For instance, in Bhakti Yoga, we are engaged 24 hours daily in Krishna's service. It is not that we just sit down and meditate. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the better best activity is to preach the message of Bhagavad Gita. Ya idam parmam guyam mad bhakte abhi dhasyati bhaktin mai param kritva maam eva eva kyati asaman saya. For one who explains the supreme secret to devotees, devotional service is guaranteed. And at the end, he will come back to me. Vidhi 1868. This is also Chaitanya's Mahaprabhu's order. Become a guru by spreading Krishna consciousness. To be guru means to be active. Mm -hmm. So here is the order, Prabhu. See? Yes. Prabhupada gave the order. <laughs> I agree, Das. Uh, the word mystic can have many different meanings. When Paul says that God's reality can be intuited only by mystical experience, what is meant? Shura Prabhupada, God is mystical for one who does not know God. <laughs> uh, but for one who knows God and receives orders from him, God is a perceivable person. The word mystic may imply something vague or obscure. Shyam Sundar Das, Bhagavan believed that mystic who has contact with God can lead others and teach them to become godly. Shura Prabhupada, this is very nice. Then by mystic, he means God representative. That is the spiritual master who is following in the disciplic succession. 
The Bhagavad Gita tells us to approach a guru who has realized the truth, God. It is not that the mystic possesses himself to be God. No, he surrenders unto Krishna and teaches others to do so. In this way, he teaches us how to become godly. Actually, it is better to say God conscious instead of godly. One who is God conscious is a true mystic. Shem Sudar Das. According to modern interpretations, a mystic is someone mysterious or magical. Yes. Shira Bhagavad. Yes. The meaning has declared to that because so many gurus came over, display miracles and claim to be God. So <laughs> these rascals are misleading the intelligent who wants to see miracle. Yeah. And the intelligent look on this miracle as mysticism. It is another case of the cheaters and the cheated. Yes, this could be a nice short, I think, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I ask him. Uh, originally, the Greek word mysticos refers to one initiated in, oh, in secret religious sites. And today, the word has degenerated to mean something obscure or occult. For Bhagsan, a mystic is one who can commune with God through contemplation and love, participate in God's love for mankind and aid the divine purpose. This is the real meaning of creative evolution. Uh, yes, everyone is in ignorance due to long separation from God. In the material world, the living entity has forgotten his relationship with God. Therefore, he acts only for sense gratification. He awakens to his real life when he is given instruction on how to become God conscious. Otherwise, he lives like an animal. Sentiment Hare Krishna Prabhu. Like uh, the darshan is going on. Oh, yes, Prabhu. In, uh, we can see yes. five minutes, two minutes. Rohan, is Bajahari Prabhu. Does yes, it have Prabhu. sound? Yes, Prabhu. I'm thinking where is the sound? I think he might have muted himself. No, no. Yes, it's no, not muted, so I don't know. Oh, Rebo. Jai Jagannath. Jai Bala Jai Bala Jai Bala Jai Bala Jai Jagannath. Jai Shri Radha Madan Mohan Ki Jai. Radha Madan Mohan Ki Jai. Jai Bala Jai. Is Karthi Prabhu there? Oh, Jolan Yatra is going on. Yes, Prabhu. The lights look so nice. I wish they had sound on. Bajahari Prabhu put sound on. Ah. Oh, see, there's the flute also. Where is Karthi Prabhu? Karthi Prabhu is there in the temple. Yes, Prabhu. I think Karthi Prabhu is a temple. Mm. Wow, very nice education. Oh, fire up Kirtan is going on, but Prabhu. Can anyone can anyone message text? Okay. Yeah, it's, he's not muted. I don't know what he's not playing because he's not muted. He may not be connected to sound. Like uh, oh. when he Oh, yeah, yeah. Sound. That Zoom thing happens, yeah. He has to connect to sound. Yeah, the quality is not nice now, so I wish there was sound also. There is Patita Pavan Prabhu also in the background. Uh, can we have someone else uh, try to record or try to, I guess, uh, show us on Zoom? Or maybe someone can uh, tell them in real life. Mm, but it looks like everyone's time. busy. Uh, let's see if we can not visible. And that's Kesha. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Are you at the temple, Prabhu? Oh, okay. He's not. Fire up Kirtan is going on. Yeah. Whoa. 
Everybody is here. We cannot go home. Oh. Sound came. Actually, I was wrong. The, the kirtan is so static and loud, it just blows out the mic. <laughs> it's true. Oh, reboot. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Reboot. Karti temple. I think Bajahari Prabhu has some noise cancellation and maybe that's why it's happening. The zoom is so rascal it thinks Kirtan is a noise. Wow, Hari Bo. Temple is so full today. Mm. Yeah. Bro, it's a, is this a Juraniatra is going on? Yes, bro. Julan Yatra has always the best kirtans. Yes, bro. Like uh, I will, I will also hear that only. Like a uh, long, long kirtans, like uh, one hour, one end of hour, yes. like that kirtan. And different kirtans and very nice to hear. Yeah. Oh, I asked him Singapore was also live today for Julan Yatra. Yes, bro, but it was in the. Yeah. I wish it was. Yeah. I don't have Facebook, so I'll have to go on Chrome. No, it will open. Is Manu Prabhu not there? No, no, he's there, I guess. No, he's there. Yes, Prabhu. What, in Singapore? I'm I'm in Philippines right now, Prabhu. Oh, no, I, I was asking if you were in the meeting, Prabhu. Oh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Please accept my motivation. Oh. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Sai Karti, Prabhu. Please accept my motivation. Of course, you should Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. I, I have to thank you, Prabhu. Uh, Everything is uh, Prabhu, you're coming muted. together. We cannot hear you, so can you put somehow the voice on if is if it's possible? Are you talking to me? Yes, Prabhu. It, no, no, it shows unmuted, but still we cannot hear it. No, no, I think Prabhu, there Prabhu. Is some voice no, cancellation he, or something. He, no, he's actually he's actually unmuted, but yes, uh, the Zoom is just you know. Uh, yes, Prabhu. But thank you so much for showing the, the darshan and. Or the kirtan. It was really nice to see it. Uh, tomorrow I will, I will again live. Prove. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Yes, thank, bro, you thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Sai Karte, Prabhu. Oh, it's, yeah, it's uh, Zoom is rascal. It's very nice. Zoom didn't give us... Thank you so much for your audio. service, Prabhu. I mean, always happy to be of some service and uh, very happy to see your comics okay, Karte, Prabhu, giving you pleasure to all our wise knowers. Uh, from here, yes, okay. The Prabhupada, yes, everyone is in ignorance due to a long separation from God. In the material world, the living entity has forgotten his relationship. Now I can nah. hear. Oh, now I can hear. Can That's you see again? I didn't hear anything. Yeah, I may. Okay, <clears throat> hold on. Yes, Prabhu, now I can Is my hear. voice audible now? Yes, Prabhu. My Wi Fi is very bad. Okay. And now, it's, now it's there. Okay, I'll just sit. Just on. Yes, everyone is in ignorance due to a long separation from God. In the material world, the living entity has forgotten from his relationship with God. Therefore, he acts only for sense gratification. He awakens to real life when he's given instructions on how to become God conscious. Otherwise, he lives like an animal. Sentiment is one thing, but when religion is understood in the light of good logic and philosophy, we can attain a perfect understanding of God. Without philosophy, religion is simply sentiment. Sentiment in itself 
does not help very much. A sentimentalist may be interested one day and disinterested another. As stated in Shiva Bhagavatam, religion means learning how to love God. At the present moment in our physical condition, we see God, but by hearing about him, we can develop our dormant love. Ramasundara Das. Bergson envisioned two types of religion, static and dynamic. Static religion is comprised of myths derived by human intelligence as a means of defense against lives and miseries. Fearful of the future, man attempts to overcome his condition by constructing religious myths. Hmm. Whatever is created by human beings is not acceptable. We do not follow such faith because human beings are always imperfect. We cannot accept anything manufactured by human beings. We must take our information directly from God as it's given in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures. Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam. The real religious principles are enacted by the Supreme Personality of God. Bhagavatam 6.3.19 Krishna says, Surrender it unto me. That is real religion. It is not man-made. Man is constantly creating so many isms. But these are not perfect. Religion that leads us to surrender to God is real religion. Otherwise, it is bogus. Ramasundra Das. For Bhagavatam, real religion is dynamic. Prabhupada. Yes, that is so. It is not static because it is on the spiritual platform. The spirit is a dynamic force in this body. There is no question of the spirit being static. Thomas Sundar Das. Bergeson says that prompted by the vital impulse, by dynamic religion, the human will identifies with the divine will in a mystical union. Hmm. Human will identifies with the Okay. So, Yes, that is the project of Krishna consciousness. We are teaching people to agree with the divine will, which means surrendering to God. Oneness means agreeing with this teaching. Ramasundra Das, real religion is a mystic oneness with God. Yes, oneness means that I agree with God. God says surrender and I say yes, I surrender. God tells Arjuna fight and Arjuna fights. Oneness means that we agree with God on all points. I agree with us. Bergeson felt that the greatest obstacle to creative evolution is the struggle with materialism. He believed that politics and economic reforms cannot help matters. Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> politics and economic reforms can help provided they are properly guided. That is, provided they aim at helping our understanding of our relationship with God. Vedic civilization was divided into four varanas and four ashramas. And these divisions were meant to help people develop their dominant God consciousness. Unfortunately, today the Kshatriyas, the administrators, have forgotten the real objective of human life. Now they are thinking only of caring for the body, living comfortably and gratifying their senses. But that is not the real purpose of life, of, sorry, of human civilization. I agree with Prabhu, sorry, I agree with us. Bergeson believed that the spirit of mysticism must be kept alive by the fortunate few who know God. Until such time as a profound change in the material condition imposed on humanity by nature should permit in all spiritual matters of a profound transformation. Yes, and this Krishna consciousness movement is dedicated to bringing about this change. I have already said that a perfect society is centered in love of God. This love is without motive. It is a natural love, like the love between a son and his father or mother. The, the material conditions provoke certain bodily demands, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. At present, people are interested only in these four activities. I agree with us. How are these material conditions going to change? Phila Prabhupada, these daily bodily necessities will remain. But in addition, people should understand God and his instructions. That will bring about change. We are not neglecting the bodily necessities, but we realize that our main business is advancing in Krishna consciousness. Presently, Krishna consciousness is not supported by the state or social leaders. People are busy thinking of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. It is not that these activities stop when we are Krishna conscious. Rather, they are regulated. I agree with us. Bergeson was optimistic in his belief that the mystics through love would eventually help mankind return to God. The Prabhupada. Yes, that is the real purpose of human life. Man has the opportunity afforded by nature to understand the instructions of the Vedas and the spiritual master. 
Only a suicidal civilization remains in darkness, concerned only with the bodily necessities. Wow. Suicidal civilization. Yes. Das. For Bergeson, the nature of God is love, through which the world comes into being. Shila Prabhupada. Yes, of course, God loves. Unless he loves, why does he come down personally to give us instructions through the scriptures? This is very I nice. agree with us. Uh, so there is this big scientist, you know, he is saying, that, uh, he was saying that, oh, we are so small. In a big universe, tiny planet, tiny person, why will he God come? So yeah, we can say that because he loves us. Loves us. Yes, Prabhu. In creative evolution, Bergeson writes, for an ego which does not change, does not enter, and a psychic state which remains the same so long as it is not replaced by the following state does not endure either. He sees all psychic states of the individual, including the ego, as constantly changing. This is the false ego that says, I am this body. By education, we can come on, come to understand that we are spirit soul. Then the activities of the soul begin. The first lesson of the Bhagavad Gita instructs us that the living entity is not the material body, but the soul within. That soul is Brahman's pure spirit. Once we understand that we are not the body, our struggle to maintain the body stops. Brahma Bhuta Prashan Atma Bhagavad Gita 18.54 Once we understand that we are the spirit soul, we concern ourselves with elevating the spirit soul to the highest perfection when we come to understand that we are only not sorry we are not only spirit soul but that everyone else is spirit soul as well we then want everyone to be given a chance to attain perfect understanding Bergeson's vitalism states that life force cannot be explained by physics and chemistry or the other sciences it is separate from Darwin's mechanical laws. Science will never be able to accurately explain the source of life, which is non-material. That is very nice. He is speaking of the soul, but he is unable to capture the idea positively. It is true that the soul is not controlled by physical laws, and that is verified by Bhagavad Gita itself. Nainam Chindanti Shastani Nainam Rahati Pavakaha Nachainam Sorry for my extremely bad pronunciation. But <clears throat> okay. the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon, nor can it be burnt by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by wind. Bhagavad Gita 2.22 The vital force of the soul can be temporarily covered by physical elements, but the soul itself does not belong to any of the physical elements. The soul is a living force and it has little independence. The supreme living force is God and the individual soul is part and parcel of God just as sparks are part of a great fire. The individual soul misuses his independence when he himself wants to become God and Lord over material nature. He then falls from his purely spiritual position into the physical engagement and forgetting his real identity, he thinks that he is the body, but he is not. The body is a circumstantial covering, a dress. The living vital force is different. Bergeson says that the reality, the living force, is always in a state of becoming and never at rest. Logical or scientific explanations are ineffective because they deal with static problems. Yes. So-called scientists do not know the real basic principle. Therefore, they are misled and misleading. The soul is living force. The soul has little independence and he wants to enjoy the material world which he cannot do. By running after phantasmagoria and, and trying to lord it over material nature, he becomes more and more entrapped. Being constantly dynamic, changing and unpredictable, the life force is too elusive for scientific investigation. The Prabhupada, yes, this is so, because it is Living force, it must be dynamic. Living force is not dead stone. They are all living force. We may be sitting here now or we may be leaving. No one can check these moments in time. Not even God interferes with our dynamic force. He allows us to do whatever we like. If God interferes with our independence, we are no longer living entities. We become dead stones. Therefore, God does not interfere. 
he gives us full freedom at the same time he comes down to instruct us saying why are you so engaged in this foolish activity please come back to me back home back to god then you will be happy hmm sometimes this confuses me because we compare become dead stones but sometimes there is said that stones and these mountains and these are living entities also so oh, some yes. Yeah, yeah, but the point is the level of consciousness yes, exhibited probably. by stones and mountains is almost negligent. So yes, for the probably. for the new person to understand spiritual life, this example is very much suitable. Right? Stone is a, uh, uh, I mean, stone is a stone. I knew about mountains, but I didn't know about stone. See this, see this. I'll show this verse where it went. One second. again 42233 42233 yes yeah, see this for human society constantly thinking how to earn money and apply it for sense gratification brings about the destruction of everyone's interest when one becomes devoid of knowledge and devotional service he enters into the species of life like those of trees and stones from this i remembered it that it was called it, it's species of live stones also so the the stone is a living entity that has that has absolutely no independence is it like that because he is in so he's conscious no no in this example what prabhu was saying is that god if takes our our takes our independence away then we will uh, become like non uh, i mean non living things dead matter yes bro yes. you should read it yes. i also had the yes. same confusion you will read it again it became clear see if yes. god interferes with our independence we are no longer living entities we become dead stone yes bro yeah it's we become dead like matter then yes bro no oh, understood okay kartik prabhu you can finish this page and then we can yes bro ramasundar prabhu For workers and the unpredictable life force is constantly creating new things. The proper yes, it is creating new things in the material phenomena, but when the life force is spiritually situated, there are no such changes. Our only business is to serve Krishna, and even in the service of Krishna, there are many varieties, but those are spiritual varieties. At the present moment, we are creating material varieties in the variety of bodies, all subject to the threefold miseries and to birth, death, old age, and disease. As long as we are materially entrapped, our dynamic force is creating trouble, and we are becoming more and more entangled. Plus, sorry, Shama Sundar Prabhu, can we ever predict the movements of the life force? The proper yes, it is moving in a variety of dresses, but its ultimate future is to return home back to Godhead. But because the individual soul is acting unintelligently, he has to be kicked in the face very strongly by material nature. Then he will come to in, come to his senses. Oh my God. Yes, his position. <laughs> When he thinks intelligently, he realizes that it is his duty to serve Krishna instead of his own material body. In this material world, we see that everyone is trying to be happy, but everyone is constantly being frustrated. This is because material happiness ultimately means frustration. That is Maya's ways of thinking. In any case, the life force will eventually return. We got it. Yes, everyone sooner or later. Some sooner, some some later. Wow. That explains my position. I'm being kicked every day, but I don't wake up. Yes. I was in temple yet. Okay. I, I yet I came here. Yeah. Why? From the last four five days, I am also unable to wake up. I don't know what has happened. I eat less. I sleep early. Still not able to wake up. Put a very very you know uh, some emergency alarm. Like I have this ambulance alarm, you know. I have. So then it will be like literally force. So <laughs> my alarm starts at three fifty. Then three fifty five, four, four five, four ten till the I five I have till I know I'm not waking up. Like every five minutes I have one alarm. Yeah, I don't even listen to alarm. alarm. That much in deep sleep I am. It's not like that. That's I'm what I'm saying. You keep alarm. emergency alarm. You keep some loud emergency alarm, you know, and then mm -hmm. and keep it close to your uh, bed, mm -hmm. and then you let it ring. 
ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> and then padita pond of course padita pond bro was working so he had some work uh, some emergency work so we were planning to sleep at like 11 and then till 2:30 we were speaking till 2 o'clock oh. and then he had to wake up at 3 o'clock for altar you know altar and then i had to wake up at 3:55 for mangal aarti but that, you know somehow or other in the temple you just like you just wake up because of fear you know because all the devotees are there prahlad prabhu is there and then if you miss then you come late to mangal aarti or you don't come and then when you come into the temple all the go to the prashadam and everybody is looking so because of the fear you wake up so the fear helps also so you can think like this that you know oh, all the devotees are there in the japa session if i'm not there you know oh it won't be nice i have to go you know so that will help you also yes prabhu in temple this happens <laughs> is the screen visible Yeah yeah it's possible. Is you try to sleep that it happens. Raja Kishor Prabhu comes and wakes you up. <laughs> I have no one to wake me up. How do you think this is a factual documentation? Yes. <laughs> this is Manu Prabhu got waken up like this I think also. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Prabhu ji said Mangalarti. How is this sleep sleeping? Oh my god. Yes, transcendental power of sleep. <laughs> Water is the best thing to wake up. Oh yeah, now he wakes up. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes Shama Goan Prabhu he throws water at us sometimes because he always wakes up sharp. You know? But the uh, great version of he always wakes up and he has to wake us up. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, here it was said that he realizes that it it is his duty to serve Krishna in the instead of his own material body. So. we have kind of with this mind we have created this body as a deity and we think it's this body is krishna and we we serve it like it was krishna but we have only created this by our own mind like a false image okay hari bol we can yes, bro in this tomorrow Thank you so much, Bharti Prabhu, for reading. Okay. I've been waiting long time that you. No, no. Thank you so much for. No, so thank you ah. for making me a fallen condition soul read spiritual subject matters. Thank you so much you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Is we are so fortunate by your reading, Prabhu. Thank you so much. It was so nice. <laughs> no, no, no. This is mad level cap. This is top level. No, Prabhu, it's not. It's very nice. Oh. Cap, no Manu cap. Prabhu can read professionally. No, yeah. but Prabhu will give expression when reading. I was just reading like, like you know, just one tune. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, no, Prabhu, you're. It needs to be very happy also. Krishna doesn't like only one person reading. I think only he wants very happy always. Hmm. Yeah. Because he doesn't take same prasadam every day. Also, he takes different, different. They they cook him different prasadam every day, so he likes. No to... wait wait wait! You just said they cook him. I don't understand. They cook Krishna. What? What did you mean, Prabhu? Is Krishna they cook him? for him? He meant they, they cook, cook for, for him, Prabhu. Oh my God! You just said they cook him. Why are you trying to cook Krishna, Prabhu? No, Prabhu. Oh no! No, this that's You're not. Trying this... to cook Krishna. <laughs> It's ah, Prabhu. English is all not first language. This is a crap. Yes, Prabhu. Prabhu, we cannot mm. we cannot do English perfectly <laughs> like the academic. You see, you see, but 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 Sami Prabhu is on the top topmost level. You know, he he's Raga Nuga, so he can no, he can say uh, all these things. But we we cannot imitate. You Prabhu, know, he, I, he has very deep emotional connection <laughs> with the supreme personality of God. Now he I will be, say anything. Now I will be cooked in some kumbi paka hell because of this. 
Ah, don't worry. No, I'm... <laughs> you're going straight, <laughs> straight. <laughs> All your things will be destroyed. <laughs> No, no. Uh, bro, I, I, just, I just told you, Dhoti, you please take me back, huh? take me back home. I'm counting on you. Huh? Please, please forget. I, actually, you know. I have to agree with what Sammy Peru is, doing, uh, is saying. Because wherever the devotee goes, it becomes Vakunta. So, uh, whether he goes to heaven or hell. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a prayer, some prayer like this? Whether I am in hell or may I always remember you. Well, who says this? There's a prayer like this. Wherever I go, either in hell or wherever, I only remember you. I think. Time to so next next which planet? Which planet for deliverance? Mm -hmm. I think you will de deliver the upper planetary systems also. Oh. No problem. I don't have access to. Okay. <laughs> I can I can only go to the upper planetary system like the astronauts. I need to build a huge machine and then I can fly and that's that's my possibility only. But what was the song? Either no. Can you say it again? Devarish Prabhu. It was uh, may I uh, uh, even if I go to hell I remember you. Don't give me liberation wherever I go. You may even if I heaven. may go to hell, I have no problem. But my only prayer is that I only always remember you. Manu Prabhu, do you remember this? Who says this? Is it Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Well, no, I think it's some Asana. something similar to that is in the Shishaskam, but if you want like like directly like that. I don't know the song. Thank you for your associations, Prabhu. I have to go now. Yes, I have some so impending work. So sorry for that. So thank you, Prabhu. Once again, Prabhu, Bishwa, Kripa, Sindhu, Deva, Chaya, Parita, Nampa, Mani, Deva, Vaishnava, Deva, Namaha, 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 Yes, I also forgot what that was, but there was some specific song like that. Okay, let's sing the six Astakam prayers. Cheto darpanam arjanam bhavamaha davagni nirvapanam Shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam vityava jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam purnam ritasvadanam sarvatmas napanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam Nana Bakari Babuda, it is her of a shakti, the crab pita, neamita, smarena, kala, eta, rishi, tava, creeper, bhagwan, mama, be, do, daivam, idrisham, e, her journey, nanubra. Trinad, a piece, suni, shena, taro, a piece, a hesh, nuna, a manina, mana, dena, Britannia, sada, hari. Natanam, Najanam, Nasundam, Tavitaba, Jakite Sakamaya, Mamma Jamani, Jamani, Esway, Pavita Bakte, Hai, the key to it. I under the Tanajakin Karam, the Tamma, Mishore, Mogam, with the Prepare Tavapa, the Kaja, Sitadudi, Sitas from Vichintaya. Nayanam Gadda Shruda Yalam Vadanam Gad Gadaludaya Gilam Pulakai Nichitam Bakukadam Tabana Magahane Bavishachi Yugai dam Nimeshena Chakshusha Pra Virshai dam Chunyai dam Jagat Sarvam Govinda Virahena me Ibo. as Lishiva para ratam inasuma, our darshanam marma hatam grotva. Yata tava vita to lampatoma branana sevena braha. Glory to the three Krishna Sankirtan. 
which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. My Lord, your holy name alone can render all benedictions to living beings, and thus we have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energy. There are not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names. Oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names, but I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction, attraction for them. Once you chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lowered in a straw in a tree, one should be more tolerant to a tree. The void of all sons falls for sheets and should be ready to offer our respect to others. Such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Well, my dear Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I desire a beautiful woman, nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. Person of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servitor, yet some or other I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the autumns at your lotus feet. Oh my Lord, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice took up and when will the hairs of my body stand on and at the recitation of your name? Oh, Govinda, feeling your separation, I am considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like the rains of rain. And I am feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. I know no one but Krishna as my Lord, and he shall remain so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me brokenhearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful Lord, unconditionally. Manu Prabhu, do you know how these are chanted? Do we ever chant these in the Sanskrit? Uh, yeah. It was chanted like that in Singapore, but I don't know how to do the meter. Yes, Prabhu, I don't also know. So I was confused because of that. A tapper of rule, he knows, and there's an incantation for this also. Hmm. So uh, if the translation goes, if one does not uh, care in avoiding the, these uh, inoffenses, no matter how long he chants his holy name, will not attain the uh, pure devotion. Oh, yes, Prabhu. Yes, I remember that. So, uh, first offense of blasphemy to devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the only name of the Lord all over the world. Second offense to considering the demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal or independent to the Name of the Lord Vishnu. To disobey the orders of the spiritual master or to consider him an Indian person. Hmm. It's first one I forgot. To bless me. Uh, yes, to bless me in the Vedic literature, literature hmm. in Persian, so the Vedic version. Ribu. Fifth one. To consider. Give same yeah. interpretation to the holy name. Interpretation uh, to... to give interpretation. No, no, no. no. Fifth is that to consider the glories of Hare Krishna to be an imagination. Sixth is to give some interpretation to the holy name of the Lord. Maybe. Yes, yes, yes. yes Prabhu, you are correct. But why is different in this one? Which one we should read then? Manu Prabhu, tell us which one is right. 
what fifth offense? What what's the to give mundane interpretation on the whole name of the Lord? Some interpretation or mundane interpretation. I'll say uh, there's a I guess a copy of the ten offenses by of course that uh, Prabhupada disciple uh, Rupanuga. He gave that uh, order and how it's written now. But I want to, you know, you know, get like a proper text to be made. But I don't know uh, if it's either mundane or some. Actually, I have Prabhu uh, uh, from uh, ISKM. I uh, downloaded one from one of the YouTube description. In here, it is given. Let me find that. The 10 offenses. No, Prabhu, like, uh, uh, I also have, like, uh, ISKM Pondicherry. Uh, like, no, no, uh, not ISKM Pondicherry. It was Turquoise Prabhu lecture. This is a PDF. It's 448 pages about verses most quoted by Shira Prabhupada. So, in that, uh, the also that uh, it is given. Uh, I will find it. So, which so one is interpretation and which one is imagination? Five or six? Uh, yes, I'm finding it one minute. Imagination. Sixth one is in, uh, interpretation. Because uh, when I, 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 I will go to Pondicherry uh, mm. morning program, say like 50 is uh, uh, give some, like uh, what uh, is that? Fifth, uh, fifth one is uh, to consider the imagination. Like uh, sixth one is to give some in the interpretation. Yes, from yeah, Okay, then this. This is wrong order on this one. Oh, yeah, I found it. Uh, so, fifth one is to give some interpretation, and the sixth one is to consider the glory. Hmm. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. Yeah, this we is the music now. But, uh, yeah. yes, Prabhu, but uh, uh, when I went to Pondicherry, uh, like, uh, they will uh, say first uh, uh, which one. Uh, Imagination and second one is giving a mundane interpretation. I'm yes. sharing the okay. screenshot anyway. on the group. So, Manu Prabhu, which one we should follow? I'm not really sure. I'm not uh, very much on that technical mm -hmm. platform right now. <laughs> need to ask it then. Prabhu, I am yeah. also sharing the PDF that most verses in the group. Yes, Prabhu. So okay, for now, let's read this one and then let's ask him. You can open the screenshot. Their Sanskrit translation, word by word, everything is given in that video. Yeah, just a second. The quality is bad. I am just sending you the PDF. Oh, I hope it opens. Last time it did not open. Or it is bad. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, I don't. This needs to be asked because I want to know which one is which. It cannot be, I think, mixed. Either one needs yeah. to be the right one. Because if someone asks what but... is the fifth offense and you, you say imagination, then he says, yeah. no, no, this is different. Are you able to open the PDF? Yes, Prabhu, I saw the picture. No, no, the PDF. In the better quality will be there. Oh, no, uh, it's showing this. Last time also this happened. Why? I don't know why this happens. Okay, so sixth offense to give some interpretations to the holy name of the Lord. Then next one to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Okay, add one. One. Consider the Seven. or eight. Eight. Okay. To okay. consider the chanting of Hare Krishna is one of the auspicious ritualistic activities Prabhu. offering the Vedas as rule of activities, Kamakanda. Yes, Prabhu. And nine is to instruct the faithless. Yes, faithless person about the glories of the holy name. And tenth one is to not have faith to chanting. And what else? 
Hari 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 Hari